Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's me, and today we're gonna to talk about do modern movies suck? Before we get into it, please like, share, subscribe down below, all that YouTube stuff. Love to hear your comments, especially on this particular topic, because I think it's a conversation that I would really like to hear what you guys think about this. Okay, so that being said, here we go. Now, this graphic here that I'm showing right now, this is from Dan Merle's uh, channel, and I, I really appreciate his take on things. I watch him, I'm a subscriber. I watch this thing, I think he's, he's got really, really insightful ideas. And there are other ones that I watch as well, but this I wanna show you in particular. Now, what they're doing here is they're showing you the box office. The box office, what, what it was before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and then now what it is now. And you can see that generally it's pretty low. And it is an issue where we have never gotten back up to where it was before that. And the question is, is will it ever get to that point? And we're looking at movie theaters literally dying. They're dying right now because there's just not enough product out there that's actually good. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. And also exactly why. So the issue is, is that when we look at what we did before the pandemic, of course, every movie is not the greatest movie in the world, right? So the people who are on YouTube, a lot of times they're like, oh, this thing sucks, or this thing is fantastic. It's either one or the other. When the truth of the matter is, is that there's a huge variety of how movies are. Ones that are spectacular blockbusters, and then ones that just simply aren't. And you have a lot of movies that are kind of made for a smaller audience, and the issue is, is that obviously they're spiraling out of control with how much money they're spending on, so even a small uh, a small focus group that you're trying to go for, you're spending too much money to make that money back. And then that's compounding the situation. So then, the, of course, the studios don't want to invest because they see it's not going to go anywhere anyway with the amount of money that they're spending. That being said, so let's go back to that chart because the other issue, obviously COVID was an issue. Shouldn't have been that big of an issue, but it was. And then the other thing on top of that is you've seen at the same time that all this was happening, you had woke. You had woke and you had people trying to push their ideas instead of entertaining people. And that's the other thing that has just completely made things implode for the most part. If you don't know your audience, it's imploding. And so I wanna go off on just a couple of things real quick. Oppenheimer, I did not expect that movie to do as well as it did. And it was obviously fantastic. Barbie. I did not like the movie. I thought that the ending, especially when they were having that little, when she was going on her little rant at the end, it was literally just saying things that are just so common sense and whining about things that it didn't give any kind of solution or anything. I thought it was actually pretty bad, but that movie necessarily wasn't necessarily made for me, right? They used the brand name Barbie, tons of girls, tons of women were gonna go see it. It had a feminist attitude towards it. It said thing that might resonate with them. And the movie, what, what made a, a billion and a half dollars? The highest grossing film of the entire year. And guess what? Awesome for them. They made a film that was for their audience and that's exactly what they did. But at the same time, we see a lot of people who are, of course, Disney is one of the, one of the biggest culprits of this, is that they are trying to take and force things into their movies, you know, things that have meaning and th what they, their message that they want to say, um, as Drinker says, the message, love that, and they are kind of ignoring the fact that no matter how much messaging they put into this film, for example, superhero films, they're not going to get the female audience to go see it. Do you know why? Because they don't want to. That's a simple, that's it. It's like, you can't make people go to see something just because you want them to. You're not going to do it. And the harder they try, not only do the men and people, we go see things and we're not going to like it, but they don't like it either. They want to see the exact same thing that we want to see. Action. You want action to be action. You want it to be these big burly guys who have muscles who are doing all kinds of crazy things. And that's what's attractive to everyone in the audience to go see those things. So it's funny because a lot of times they use those things. They're like, oh, people don't want this and people don't want that. They will vote with their wallets. And now more than ever, they're doing that bigger and bigger. They're voting with their wallets. That's why Barbie can come out and crush it. Uh, Mario Brothers was not a great movie. It was okay, 
but it was made for kids. It was it had Easter eggs everywhere. My kids loved that film because they could see all the characters that they know and love, and that's all they needed to do. And it was a decent enough. It was it was competent enough for people to really really enjoy it. And even Kung Fu Panda is doing very very well. One of the one of the better performing ones, and it's okay. Um, but um, generally, that's the thing. People are trying to force things down your throat, and you're not buying it. Which leads me on to a little bit of a mini rant, and that's this. Everybody knows the whole thing about a Mary Sue. If you make a character, a woman, a female character, that has no arc, no nothing that you've learned, just the fact that all of a sudden she's, she's amazing at everything, and she realizes that she's always been awesome. That's not a story arc. That sucks, and no one embraces that. No one connects with that because it's just so far-fetched and ridiculous. Luke Skywalker, I'm old enough, saw Star Wars for the first time. You saw this insecure boy who was not sure who did such a heroic thing towards the end of the movie. You saw that arc, that growth, that perseverance, that drive to do this thing that was awesome for everybody. And that's what made it an amazing story. Because everyone can connect with that. Going up against the, big, the bad guy. You know, overcoming the odds and doing these marvelous things. And people, that resonates with people. Another one, Boys in the Boat. I did the review on that one. People want to see those stories where people against the odds persevere and triumph. And some people say, oh, it's the same old thing. It doesn't matter. People resonated with it. If you look at the Rotten Tomatoes, if you look at the score of the people, they loved that film. It was spectacular. And the, what the what the critics gave it and what the people gave it who actually saw the movie was like leaps and bounds. It was like night and day. It was ridiculous. But that's the thing that people are ignoring. They're ignoring what the people want to see. Now, so going on to this and, and going back to do movies suck, the other issue is obviously the ridiculous amounts of money that they're spending and pouring into this thing. Listen, Godzilla minus one winning best special effects at the Oscars was spectacular because the entire movie cost somewhere between like 12 and $15 million. That's it, right? That's it. And you have other movies that are costing two, $300 million to make. It's such bloat and it's so ridiculous. Hollywood will not recover until they scale down still producing the things that they need to produce properly, great special effects and so on and so forth, but without that bloated budget because they'll never make their money back. And it's funny because you watch how, how good of things they can produce nowadays on a shoestring budget and it's amazing. It's like you look at it and you're like, I can't even imagine that this is a made for TV movie or a TV series or something along those lines. It's just, it's amazing. It's really, really cool. They have those assets in their arsenal so they can do things at a much cheaper scaled rate as far as like you know how much it would actually cost and they can still produce awesome things but it still comes down to the story and that's the thing that is missing from so many films and when they have a good story when they have a good heart when they have a good universal message people will go people will see it and they will vote with their dollars but again Hollywood, until you get those costs down, until you start writing good stories, having good character arcs, you will never, ever, ever recover from what you have done to yourself. And that's the sad part. I love movies. You obviously love movies. If you're listening to me, you obviously love movies, right? And we want to see those things succeed. No one wants to see a bad movie. And even though there might be movies, I know there are there are people who are like, they want something to fail um, just because they don't like that person or they don't like that group or whatever. Nobody wants a bad thing to happen to anybody deep down inside. If they do, they're a little evil. I can't condone that. However, we want good products. We want good things. And it's the only way that it will succeed is if we get back to those basics fundamentally write good stories, keep the costs down, know your audience, give them what they want, entertain them, and maybe, maybe we can build that back up as far as people going to the movies. Myself, I don't think it's possible. I think we have almost gotten to that point of no return. But also at the same time with some of the announcements that have come from Disney, Bob Iger, them canceling some projects, 
perhaps, maybe, they're starting to switch and they're starting to look back, but it's gonna take a few years before we start getting those films that resonate with people, that people will enjoy, that people will support. We'll see what happens. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Do me a favor, don't forget, like, subscribe down below, share your comments. I wanna have a conversation with you about this. Do you think Hollywood can make it back? Do you think we'll ever get back to that, to that level of what we had before the pandemic? The pandemic was just an excuse. That's not what it was. It was that and the culture war and all these terrible writings and all these movies. But do you think it's going to be possible? Do you think people will do it? And also, as another little side note, a little thing we can throw into this conversation, let's see if you guys listen to this part and answer this. Is social media and the fact that these movie stars and TV stars are so vocal about their thoughts and opinions and sticking their noses and all this other stuff, we may ne never have known about people in the past because it wasn't there, but now it's here. Does that hurt? Does that hurt the whole situation? I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. Thanks so much for stopping by. We'll catch you guys in the next one.